Thank you, Chairman Johnson, Ranking Member <clears throat> Carper, and members of the committee. My name is Udi Ofer, and I'm the Executive Director of the American Civil Liberties Union of New Jersey. And it is my honor and privilege to be here today on behalf of the ACLU and the more than one million supporters of our supporters living across the United States, including in New Jersey. Today's hearing comes at a critical moment in our nation's history when there is a rare opportunity to take bold action on criminal justice reform. Republicans and Democrats alike are taking a second look at our nation's criminal justice system. And Republicans and Democrats alike are becoming much more pragmatic and much less ideological in their approach to criminal justice. Following decades of punitive policies that have sent millions to prison and devastated communities, particularly low-income communities of color, Americans are now realizing that our nation's prisons and jails have grown too big and that all too often, the people who end up imprisoned really suffer from drug addiction or mental illness and should not be incarcerated in the first place. We all know the story of the growth of our nation's incarcerated population. Our nation's jails and prisons hold almost 2.3 million people on any given day. The federal prison population has increased from 25,000 prisoners in 1980 to more than 207,000 today. And all of this comes at an annual cost to taxpayers of tens of billions of dollars. But the costs have far more severe consequences than simply the fiscal expenses necessary to incarcerate 25% of, of the world's prisoners in a country with 5% of the world's population. The true costs are human lives, and particularly generations of young black and Latino men who serve long prison sentences and are lost to their families and, in, and to their communities. And the fact is that African Americans and Latinos are disproportionately engulfed in our broken criminal justice system. So it is clearly time for a change. We are at our crossroads as Americans recognize the need to reform both our federal and state criminal justice systems. So with this in mind, I come before you today to urge you to seize this opportunity to reform prison practices, reduce the incarcerated population, and create a system that is smarter, a system that is fairer, and a system that is more cost effective. And at the top of any reforms of federal prison practices must be the issue of solitary confinement. Approximately 5% of federal prisoners are in solitary confinement. That means that on any given day, 11,000 people in federal prisons, 11,000 people are confined to a six by nine cell and deprived of basic human contact with little to no natural light and minimal, if any, constructive activity for 22 to 24 hours a day. In some federal facilities, the average time that a prisoner sits in continuous solitary confinement is four years. You need to look no further than the front page of today's science section of the New York Times, and it's the science section, not the politics section, to get a better understanding of the mental and physical consequences of long-term solitary confinement. And according to a, a recent independent review of the federal prison system solitary practices, there are major problems. Federal prisons send thousands of seriously mentally ill individuals into solitary confinement, people who should be receiving treatment, not sitting in the hole, and federal prisons use solitary and close to 1,400 people who are there for protective custody, protective custody, but instead are subjected to virtually the same conditions as prisoners are in solitary for punishment. So what can we do about this? Well, there are many small yet important steps that the Bureau can take today and that are outlined in the independent review. Yet the truth is, if all that we take today are small steps, then we will have lost this historic moment for bold change. Now is the time for historic change. Solitary confinement has no place in American prisons. Physical separation may sometimes be necessary for safety and for security, but isolation is not. Therefore, we call on the Bureau of Prisons and we call on the Congress to resolve this issue once and for all. First, it's time to abolish the use of solitary confinement for persons under the age of 18 and for persons with mental illness. Senators Cory Booker and Rand Paul have already introduced legislation, the Redeem Act, 
which would prohibit the use of solitary confinement on juveniles, and we fully support this legislation. Second, for all other prisoners, the Bureau should abolish periods of solitary confinement lasting longer than 15 days, period. We believe that implementing these recommendations will lead to a smarter and more humane system and will lead to a decrease in the federal prison population by reducing recidivism rates. Finally, a couple of quick words about New Jersey. Given the focus of this hearing on BOP practices, the lessons from New Jersey are not directly applicable, but there are some important lessons worth mentioning. New Jersey is not a perfect model. We, we have terrible solitary confinement practices, but there are some things that we've done well. In 1999, New Jersey's incarcerated population peaked at more than 30,000. Today, it is at about 21,000, a 30% reduction in a decade and a half. How did we achieve it? We achieved it, we achieved it through numerous policies, with the biggest ones being changing our harsh mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenses and a decrease in the number of, of parolees returned to prison for technical violations. And as mentioned by Senator Johnson, we recently had a major victory in a bipartisan manner working with Governor Christie to overhaul our state's uh, bail system, which we believe will lead to thousands of fewer people sitting in jail simply because they are poor. Uh, poor. So look, nationwide, the bipartisan commitment to criminal justice reform is as strong as it will ever be. So the ACLU urges the Congress to take bold action to adopt our recommendations, which would help to increase, increase fairness and justice at every stage in the system. Thank you.